Welcome to Scrapping with Sherry and page 67 in our sketchbook. Now, when I looked at this, I immediately thought of this new punch that came out recently. I think it's called Mandela Sunshine. It was actually a promo. If you spent $130 or $135, you got this free. And um, I felt like this is a perfect look for the sketch that we're going to do today. I am only going to do a one pager on this, which is quite shocking to me. And I'm going to be using several different collections. Well, at least a couple of different collections. I've pulled a dark blue and this blue that's a, kind of a medium blue with a light blue on the back. And those will be the main parts of the page. And then I pulled this um, orangey color. I, can, I don't know exactly what you would call it. It's got these um, things like from Bryce Canyon. I can't remember what those are called today either, but it's this orangey color that comes from the Leave Nothing Behind collection. And I'm gonna be mixing these two to do some sunset pictures. Now it's funny when I think about it because none of this really screams sunset. The denim does not, this orange does not, but the colors were really pretty with the pictures. And this was a sunset in Michigan that my husband and I got to see and it was just beautiful. So I wanted to just do a one pager of that. And I think these pictures are gonna lend themselves to that pretty easily. So let's do our cutting first. Now the design shows us that our inside piece is an 11 by 11 with the outside background. And I really thought, okay, I'm just gonna do this easy. I'm not gonna gut the paper, but I just can't waste this denim paper because I like it so well. Now, you know, in the past, I have made so many mistakes when it says an 11 by 11 and I've cut an inch off. Well, this time I hope to get it right because I really only have to cut half an inch off um, when I'm gutting. So what I've done is I've slid my paper to this half inch mark. That's the first mark to the right of the cutting mat. I'm lining my cutting edge up on about a half an inch, give or take. And here again, this is, this is not the math that freaks me out and I'm unhappy if I don't do it exactly right. But I didn't want to get pretty close to a half an inch. And I guess I've done enough practice that I can eyeball that relatively well. If you can't, you can do all the measurings or you can just cut your paper down and use two different sheets and that's okay too. I mean, if you're like me, you've got more paper than you'll ever use before you die, but I just can't seem to waste the denims. Anything blue, I have to use it very sparingly. And that's pretty good. So my thought is to use the lighter as the background, to use the inner inside, because I feel like my pictures are really gonna show up well on that. And I don't wanna just stick this to my scrapbook page yet because I'm not sure where it's gonna come in my album. So I'm gonna adhere this to the back of this cover sheet. And I'm just gonna use regular tape. Now this part is often difficult, just adhering this little frame and getting it evened up. The good thing is you don't have to worry about your tape going over because it's all gonna be covered up anyway. And I'll show you what I've found to work best for me in adhering the little frames. So I did put a good bit of tape on it, not tons, but a good bit. And I just line this first corner up and it doesn't matter really which corner it is, but then slide to your um, corner that's on the same row as that and then work up from there. And it pretty much should match up. Sometimes the papers are a little bit different in size. Sometimes my cuts are not exactly square, but for the most part, it matches up. And then I'm just gonna stick that one right inside there. Now you saw I didn't do all the measuring and stuff. The um, border looks pretty consistent to me. It looks pretty even all the way around. You may notice too, when I flipped that, I'm getting some ruffles on my cuts. That probably means it's time to flip the mat on my 12 inch trimmer. 
if you don't know, your um, trimmer, it has this mat that is removable. And you can see mine's getting pretty bad there. And I've got it on the number one. I'm just going to flip that around to number two and see if that gives me better cuts without the ruffling. Most of my customers immediately think they need a new blade, but I can tell you nine times out of 10, all you've got to do is flip that mat. And you can even flip it over and go to three and four. It will cut thousands of times before it is um, ready to be retired. So let's look at this inside piece. I'm gonna cut this with this darker blue. It's a six and a half by 12. I am working off of a scrap piece, so yeah, we've got plenty of room for a six and a half. Oh yeah, that cut is so much smoother, perfect. And you know I'm gonna save that little piece. That'll make a great border down the road. And I'm just gonna add this in. I'm actually turning this because I'm seeing some white edge here, but I feel like it'll be easier to cover up maybe even down at the bottom here. Still seeing some white. That's the one um, drawback, I guess, to doing the gutting process is sometimes it just doesn't all line up exactly right and you may get a little background noise. I'm not overly concerned about that, but that's what embellishments are for, right? All right. And I am gonna go ahead and cut my sunshine while I'm at it. And for this, this particular punch is very different. We've had a few of these, but for it, you need to start with a six by six piece of paper. So a six inch square. And I'm gonna tell you, you need to do that, but I mean, play around with some other things and see what you like. Um, with some of them, I found that it works as long as you have even numbers, like, Two, two inch square, four inch square, whatever, eight or 10. But I do want the six inch for this. And this one is made so differently. It has a tray all the way around to stop your paper exactly where it needs to stop. I really like that. So you punch, rotate, punch, rotate, punch, rotate. And when you've got all that done, you're left with something that looks like this. So you flip your paper over to give you a straight edge again, and you're gonna just line that straight edge up in the edge of the tray and do the same thing, punch and rotate until you get it all done. Now, this is super easy. It makes a really pretty design for lots of embellishment uses. And I think for me particularly, one of the best things about it is the directions for what to do with it are right here on the side of it. So if you just forget what to do, look at the side of it, you've got your directions. That's a really awesome punch. I'm gonna just dump the scraps out and I've got what will end up being my sunshine look here. All right, so we've got that. Now let me look at the pictures that I wanna use on this. I've got these in order. So we've got the sun a little higher, a little lower, going down behind the mountain there, and then it's done. So I think for on this, I want to put the beginning and the end on this map fully. I don't need every single picture as a full picture. So these other three, we can cut down and add right here. So I'm just gonna lay those out right now. All right, so let's get our trimmer. And it shows us that these are all three by three photos. And basically what I'm gonna do is just kind of center the sunset in the middle of this. Get us down to, I wanna keep that stick in there. I don't know why, but I think that stick's kind of cute. Cutting off a little sky. And I just keep going around until I get it to a three inch square. Now these pictures do look very similar. A lot of you would not even use all of them. And that's okay. I actually had about, let's see, this is one, two, three, four, five. 
this is five pictures of this sunset. I think I probably had 10 or more pictures that I took playing with different settings on my camera or on my phone camera. And I ended up losing the others because the colors were really different. In the others, the sky didn't, didn't show up as blue and I really loved the blue of the sky. So I did wanna keep that part. And on this one, I do wanna keep the tree here. I just think that's really pretty over on the side. And I'm gonna cut it down some, but not all the way off. And when I do this, I'm really just looking at the three inch on here and seeing how much it's gonna fit in that space. And that's how I'm trimming it down. All right. So that shows the progression. Now let's, oh, there's a big journaling box there. I was trying to take that off my page. Let's see what we need to do next. All right, so to keep it complementary, to keep keep consistency, I suppose, I wanna map these back in the white. And since those are three by threes, I've got a strip here that's three and a quarter by three and a quarter, or it's three and a quarter by 12. I'm just gonna cut off the three and a quarter squares to map those three photos. We'll do that real quickly. This is actually a really quick page. And if you don't get the middle and you just cut as is, man, how fast would this one go? I would love to have done this as a two page spread, but I'm still in the process of laying out this album and figuring out what goes where. And I just pull pictures that I want to do at that moment because I like the colors or I came across a paper that I thought, oh, this is pretty. Let's pull these pictures and go with it. Um, that's kind of the way I scrapbook my vacations. I jump here and there in the album based on what I feel like scrapbooking that particular day. And today it was sunsets. Look how beautiful that is. All right, let's stick these down real quick. And I am gonna do those Caddy Wampus. That's what they showed, and I kind of like the look of that. For whatever reason, on the sketch, they've left this last one kind of dangling by itself. I'm going to pull it up a little bit because I am going to add some embellishment here, I think. And these two, I'm just going to kind of make sure from top to bottom. My spacing is the same top to bottom as it is on the sides here. Notice I didn't tape this yet. And I'm gonna do the same here, just make sure I get my spacing uniform. And I'm sticking down the bottom, but then on this, I'm just gonna pop some tape on here. I'm not gonna tape down every one of these little edges with my repositionable, although I could. Um, but I just feel like it's not necessary because a page protector will be going on this pretty soon. Love the colors. What about you? I think that's a really pretty page. Now, in looking for embellishments, I didn't really look very hard because I just pulled out the ones that came with the denim collection. I knew they would fit. This pocket full of sunshine, I debated, but I really don't like it necessarily with what we've got going on. I love this one that says Remarkable. I think that's really pretty and I like it down here. So I think I'm gonna do a couple of foam squares on that. I did pull a couple of the other embellishments from the denim collection just to look. And I liked the darker of this, but I really wanted to use it here, I think. I need to write that I was already um, dressed for bed that night. I was just lounging in the hotel room and my husband came back from his walk and he said, you have got to come out and see the sunset. It's just so spectacular. So I threw on a couple of, uh, I threw on some pants and a jacket over my pajamas and we ran outside and then we ended up sitting for quite a while. The sunset takes a long time and man, the sunset was, were late in um, Michigan based on what I was used to here at home. So we sat out for a while. It was funny though, the longer we sat, the more people came out to see the sunset. 
and we all just sat and enjoyed it together. So that was a lot of fun. And I'm thinking I'm just gonna layer those there. Um, let's just pull my foam squares and go ahead and do that. And then we'll talk about what we need next or if we need next. So my journaling will say, you know, I was already dressed for bed. Basically what I just told you. People ask all the time, well, how do you decide what to journal? Tell me the story. If I'm sitting there looking at your page with you, what do I not know about this based on the pictures? And you don't know that I was already ready for bed. And he came in because he saw the sunset and thought it was pretty and I should come enjoy it with him. So those are those little things in life that make a big difference. And I'm going to use just my regular tape on this because I am going to layer another embellishment on top of it. I think the hearts in there give us a good feel. It brings in some more of that brownie orangey color. And again, those were from the denim collection, whereas this orangey paper was from Leave Nothing Behind. So you can tell how well these um, collections coordinate with one another. All right, and there's one more. It's the little things. I like that. So I think I'm gonna add that up there. And these are stickers, so I am putting foam squares all around this to keep it popped up off the page. So, aside from the journaling, this page is done. I love the look of it. I love the blues and the oranges, but I also just love sunset. So, that's perfect. So, this was page 76 in your sketchbook. We did it very similar to the layout, except I added my embellishments on this corner rather than on my picture. Otherwise, this is done. Thanks for tuning in. I appreciate you coming. I appreciate you telling your friends about our channel and liking and subscribing and commenting. I enjoy reading your comments and I, I love having you engaged in our little community here. So until I see you next time, happy scrubbing. Mm -hmm.